Well, good afternoon. Welcome to Pilgrim Congregational United Church of Christ here in Lansing, Michigan on this Ash Wednesday, February 22nd of 2023. It's a bit of an unusual day for us, uh, for you who are looking on online. We are having a nice Midwestern storm. And so uh, some people have decided that they would rather secure themselves at home but we have some brave souls here who have come to be a part of uh, our Ash Wednesday. So when we are few in number, we are mighty in spirit. Ash Wednesday is the first day of the church season of Lent. Lent is a 40 day period of spiritual renewal and rededication in preparation for Easter. Sundays are excluded from the count of 40 days because they are considered little Easter's. And Easter is a time of celebration and praise. The 40 days is meant to match the 40 days which Jesus spent in the wilderness just after his baptism when he prepared for his earthly ministry. Like Jesus, we are to use these 40 days to prepare ourselves for service to God in self-denial and spiritual discipline so we may increase our devotion to God. The season of Lent is like the spring cleaning of our hearts and souls. Over the past year, we may have found that we have grown more distant from God. We have become lax in our prayers, reading scripture, and doing ministry. Lent provides a yearly reminder and opportunity to improve our faith and spiritual life. Lent is a time to sweep out all the dust of distraction and indifference that blocks our devotion to God. If we wish to renew our faith and revitalize our devotion to God, there are a number of things we can do to improve our relationship with God. The first step, however, is self-examination. We all need to assess the state of our faith, and we all need to examine our habits and attitudes to determine what is keeping us from a good relationship with God we first need to decide what spring cleaning of our hearts that we need to do. After our self-examination, the second step is to figure out what we need to do to become closer to God. And many people attend more worship services and set aside more time to read the scripture, to do more praying, more meditating, and to do service to others. Well, we may not want to uh, do several of these practices, and we may also need to change the practices that we are doing when one is not helping us as much as we like. Once we have determined the time and practices, 
We need to set goals to encourage our progress. The goals should challenge us to stretch, but not so much and be so difficult as to give us up, give up things in frustration. We should set goals that are not too easy and not too hard. The next step is to do those things. It is good, though, to have a formal beginning to doing these new practices, so we will take seriously our commitment to renew our faith. We formally begin the season of Lent with Ash Wednesday. This day is called Ash Wednesday because it is a day when repentant believers and spiritual seekers receive the mark of the cross in ashes on their forehead or hand. In ancient times, people would cover themselves in ashes as a sign of their grief and sorrow over something they had done wrong or if they had lost someone to death. People receive ashes today as a sign of their grief and sorrow over the things they have done wrong or have failed to do in their devotion to God. Ashes are a visible sign of the inner truth that we have turned away from those things that have separated us from God and now desire to be reconciled. Ash Wednesday is the beginning of the spiritual journey through Lent to become closer to God in seeking a greater devotion to God and a stronger commitment to doing God's will, we may recall the words of Job when he became aware of God's holiness. Job said, I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore, I despise myself and I repent in dust and ashes. From Job 42, 5 through 6. Our theme for Lent is in order to see the sunrise, you must first see it set. We experience many gains and losses in our lives. Sometimes what we gain is good and healthy for us, acquiring new skills and abilities, growth and maturity, becoming more loving, deepening devotion to God, and more. To lose these things is bad. Sometimes we gain things that are not good for us, bad habits, consequences of earlier actions and decisions, regression, and others. To, those, to lose those things is good for us. To grieve for the good we have known or failed to experience is a healthy reaction to loss. On Ash Wednesday, we begin our journey to grieve the good we have done because of our bad decisions, misdeeds, and wrongdoings. We begin to let go of the mistakes of the past that weigh us down in guilt and shame as we gain the forgiveness of God and ourselves. We have witnessed many sunsets in our lives, but now we look to the sunrise of our spirits. In this Lenten season, we seek to gain the rising of our spirits in love by the grace of God. So in this season of Lent, we explore the different meanings of, in order to see the sunrise, you must first see it set. We will be imposing ashes today. Uh, for you who are watching online, you can do it vicariously, um, meaning that uh, those who are here may receive the ashes if that is what they wish to do and meaningful to them. But for those of you who are watching online, you can prepare some ashes, sometimes it, do, it doesn't really matter what they are. We usually use palm branches and burn those, and those are the ashes we use for, for this Ash Wednesday. And then we do a mixture of oil and ashes for the anointing. Uh, no special oil either, just whatever you have available. So anointing with oil has been uh, used as a healing in ceremonies for thousands of years. And we will also be writing on two pieces of paper. So you might want to be ready when we are instructed that you have those two papers ready to fill out. Let us begin with some centering words. In this season of Lent, we seek the reviewing, renewing of our spirits and the restoration of a close relationship with God. We seek to free ourselves of whatever has kept us 
from loving and serving God as fully as we can. We seek now to turn away from the missteps and misdirections that have kept us from God's presence. We ask for God to breathe the breath of life into us once again. Today, we embark on our journey to return to God in fullness of faith. God calls us to service. We are called to act with justice, to love tenderly, to serve one another, and to walk humbly with God. We are called. continue to center our focus on God as the call to worship goes out. God, God bids us come to worship and to go out in service. Come, all of you who have distanced yourselves from God and you who feel spirituality lost and abandoned. We seek to have our thirsty souls quenched by the water of life and to have the breath of God breathed into us anew. From the good dust of the earth, we were created in God's image. Today, we seek to be all that God intended as the creation in God's image. So we repent of our wrongdoings and seek God's forgiveness and strength on our journey. Today, we begin our 40-day journey through the season of Lent to discover who God wanted us to be in, in daily, daily spiritual, spiritual practices, practices and services. We will immerse ourselves in this Lenten journey of spiritual renewal and devotion. One of the most important things for us to be aware of for our spiritual renewal is to feel regret and sadness at failing to live as God desires us to live. We must let go of our past sins by seeking the forgiveness of God. But we have hope because we know that God is loving and forgiving. Let us set our hearts right with God. Psalm 51 is a confessional and a petition to God for forgiveness. We turn to our first scripture reading. 
Psalm 51, 1 through 3, 7 through 12, and 15 through 17. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my inequity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my inequities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. And now let those who are able stand for our opening song. We sing as a confession of our wandering hearts. The Apostle Paul encourages us to sing songs, especially spiritual songs. It has been said that when one sings, a person prays twice. We sing, O oh God, how we have wandered, verses 1 and 3. Please be seated. The prophet Joel talks about seeking repentance, returning to God with all our hearts. This is from the prophet Joel, chapter 2. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. It is near a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. The prophet Joel warns us of the coming of God. And like the shepherd who leaves the 99 sheep and seeks the one lost, so God comes looking for us. The prophet says to turn away from the self-indulgent path that we are on and return to God. There was an ancient tradition of showing grief and sorrow by tearing one's clothing. The prophet Joel recommends that we show in our hearts our grief and sorrow 
for going astray from God's ways. He mentions the spiritual practices of fasting and repentance to demonstrate our regret for leaving God. So we heed the advice of the psalmist and prophet and join in confession. Admitting our sins to ourselves can be very difficult, let alone admitting them before God. But knowing that God is loving and forgiving can give us the courage we need to own up to what we have done wrong and to confess it to God. We may also find more courage as we say our confession privately and silently to God, as we ask for forgiveness and guidance. Let us silently give our confession to God. Let us pray. But then it is also important for us to confess as a community. It is important to join together with others to ask for God's absolution and direction. So we confess together. Merciful God, we confess to you and to one another that we have not always followed the path that Jesus has put before us. We have been distracted by many things that are not helpful in our spiritual journey. We have faulted by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with all our hearts and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Please restore us, O oh God, and accept our repentance through the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Actively listening to spiritual music and songs can also help us to renew our spirits. Listen to this song to receive insight and inspiration. This song is a simple prayer asking God to change us into the creation that God wants us to be. We open our hearts to be transformed into God's creation. Change my heart, O oh God. Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. You are the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me, this is what I pray. my heart, oh God, may I be like you. To progress in our spiritual renewal, we need to be open and honest with God, expressing our piety sincerely. Faith is a deepening trust in God, not about us winning the admiration of other people. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus warned us to be honest and sincere about all of our faith practices, such as giving money, praying, and fasting. 
we turn to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, and then 16 through 21. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. One important way for us to keep ourselves honest and sincere in our faith uh, renewal practices is to maintain our focus on what is ultimately important in life. We must keep our focus on God's kingdom. To check in with our focus in this season of Lent, here is an exercise you can do. You will need two small pieces of paper for this, about three or four inches square. On one piece of paper, write the things that you want to focus on less or do less. And on the other piece of paper, write those things that you want to focus on more or do more of. Our focus and our motives are important. They are like the rudder of a ship. They steer us in a certain direction and action. If we only look at what we do and not the reasons we do what we do, then how can we be sure that we are sincerely following Jesus or that we are just seeking the admiration of others? Ideally, what we want to focus on during Lent are things that bring us closer to following Jesus and give us treasure in heaven. For example, you might want to write down on one piece of paper that you want to focus on prayer more, reading the scriptures, or meditate. Maybe you want to help out more in your community. There are many things that could help you become closer to God. Then on the other piece of paper, you could write down what you want to get rid of so you can focus more on your praying, reading, or helping out. Maybe you want to watch less television to allow more time for praying or reading scripture. So please, take a couple of minutes to fill out the papers, then keep both papers with you through Lent, and check on them every so often to see how you are doing in your faith renewal. You may want to pause this oops, service as you fill them out. The next song reminds us with its lyrics that God accepts us just as we are with all of our faults and flaws. We do not have to be perfect in order to approach God. The only thing God needs from us is a willing heart 
to reconnect and grow closer to God. Each one of us comes before God just as I am. We're going to do verses 1, 3, and 4. the time for us in the mark of ashes. For thousands of years, ashes have been a symbol of grief and repentance. People would put ashes on themselves to show their sorrow for a great loss in their lives, but it also symbolized our grief and loss over our connection with God. Ashes show our sorrow for failing to do the things that God wants us to do, and that failing then damages or even breaks our relationship with God. The ashes also show our commitment to return to God and to follow God more closely. So everyone here may receive ashes. And uh, for those of you who are watching online, you may use the mixture that you have prepared. These ashes open the door to God's acceptance and, re and forgiveness. The forgiveness of God is for everyone. The need for forgiveness is recognized by those who are spiritually astute and humble in heart. Humble hearts receive the sign of our repentance and the forgiveness of God. We'll start with the congregation to come forward. mark of God's forgiveness. Be blessed.
Beloved in Christ, by God's word, we know we are forgiven and that God loves us in spite of our faults and failures. When, when we, we turn, turn away from, from the falseness and pettiness, and pettiness of, of our lives, God's love comes to us and, and we, we are, are given, given new possibilities for living. living. God forgives more than we can forgive and loves more than we can love. Know in your hearts that you are forgiven. The future is open to each of you and it is open to us all. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand if you are able for our closing song. God has given us the assurance of our pardon and salvation through Jesus Christ. When we discover God's presence in our lives, we find peace as we submit to God's will. Our life story is sung in the praise of God's blessed assurance. Verses 1 and 3. <clears throat> Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine! Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of the Spirit, washed in Christ's blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with God's goodness, lost in Christ's love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Please be seated for a moment here. I think today deserves a bit of a special prayer for us all. Dear God, yes, we're experiencing a lot of inclement weather, and we pray, Lord, for you to have each and every one of us get home safely and soundly. We uh, ask you, Lord, to watch over us and take care of us and our families and friends. We ask for your love to surround us always. And God blesses you with love. God bless you with forgiveness. And may this season of Lent be a time of renewal and strengthening of your faith. Draw close to God and know the power and peace of God's loving presence. May this time, may this be a time of spiritual awakening. And may God's spirit be with you to give you guidance, comfort, and strength on your journey. God bless us all. Be safe. Amen. Please join me in the, the post. Won't you let me be your servant? Verse 2.